Hi everyone, and welcome back. In our last lesson, we introduced the notion of a power series. This was very similar to a Taylor series, right? It's an infinite sum of powers of x minus x naught with some coefficients cn. Now, unlike a Taylor series, however, the coefficients don't need to come from a particular function f of x. We don't need to take the nth derivative of a function and divide by n factorial to get these cn's. They can be whatever you like. So a power series might feel a little bit more general than a Taylor series, but really these notions are more or less the same. The big question that we asked surrounding power series was the following. If you hand me a power series, for which values of x will that series converge? And for which values of x will the series diverge? By looking at a couple examples, we determined that the ratio test might help us to answer this question. The two examples that we considered are shown below. In our first example, we found that the limit from the ratio test was always equal to zero, regardless of what x value you started with. That means that no matter what x value you pick, this series is going to converge. And in fact, it will converge absolutely. In our second example, the other extreme occurs. The limit from the ratio test calculation was equal to infinity for all x, except when x is equal to two. When x is equal to two, that limit was zero. So therefore, our series will diverge everywhere except at its center. When x equals two, the series will converge. Now, in most cases, we aren't dealing with these two extreme situations. In general, a power series will converge for x values within some interval, and it will diverge for x values outside of that interval. The interval where the power series converges is fittingly called you guessed it, the interval of convergence. Now, right in the middle of the interval of convergence is the point x naught. This is actually why we refer to x naught as the center of the power series. There's a certain distance that you can move in either direction from x naught and still have your power series converge. That maximum distance that you can move is known as the radius of convergence. Now, this might feel like a lot of new terminology, but don't worry. This will all start to make sense when we consider some examples. That's actually the main purpose of this video, to work through some problems and get you used to these new ideas. To help you better understand the ideas of radius of convergence and interval of convergence, consider the following example. For which real numbers x does this power series, centered at one, converge? Well, just like in the examples from our last video, we'll start by applying the ratio test. We'll apply the ratio test. To use the ratio test, we need to compute the limit as n goes to infinity of the absolute value of a n plus one over a n. So in this case, we get the limit as n tends to infinity of the absolute value of x minus one to the n plus one divided by the square root of n plus one plus one, all divided by x minus one to the n divided by the square root of n plus one. We flip the bottom fraction and simplify we get the limit as n tends to infinity of the absolute value of x minus one to the n plus one over x minus one to the n times the square root of n plus one over the square root of n plus two. I cancel the common terms and I'm left with the limit as n tends to infinity of the absolute value of x minus one times the square root of n plus one over n plus two. Notice that everything in the square root is gonna tend to one right? So my limit is actually equal to the absolute value of x minus one. From here, what can we conclude about the convergence of our power series? Well, if you'll recall, the ratio test tells you different information depending on the value of this limit. In our case, absolute value of x minus one. If the limit is less than one, the series will converge, right? So let's write this down. If this is less than one, we have a convergent series. If instead the limit is greater than one, the series diverges. Finally, if the limit is equal to one, well, we can't say. The series could converge or it could diverge. We have to apply further tests. So at present, we definitely have convergence when the absolute value of x minus one is less than one, right? Equivalently, we have convergence when x minus one is between minus one and one, and if we move that minus one over, we have x between zero and two. Our series definitely converges for these values. 
but we could also possibly have convergence here, when the absolute value of x minus 1 is equal to 1. That will occur at the endpoints of this interval, when x equals 0 or x equals 2. Ah, okay, so we definitely have convergence inside the interval, but we might also have convergence at the endpoints. We have to test the endpoints separately. This diagram shows us where we are in the problem. We've used the ratio test to show that the series will converge when the absolute value of x minus 1 is less than 1. This includes all x values that are less than 1 unit away from the center of our power series, less than 1 unit away from 1. So everything that lies strictly between 0 and 2 will give us a convergent series. If, however, the absolute value of x minus 1 is greater than 1, the series will definitely diverge. This includes numbers beyond 2 and before 0. So the only thing left to determine is whether our series converges at the endpoints of this interval, when x is 0 or x is 2. We're going to check those in just a moment using some of our other convergence tests. Before doing this, however, let me remind you about a little bit of terminology from our first slide, the radius of convergence. In this case, since we can move at most one unit away from the center of our power series and still maintain convergence of our series, we say that the radius of convergence of this power series is 1. It's the distance from the center to the end point of your interval. Okay, let's see what happens when x is equal to 0. We plug 0 into our power series, and that gives us the sum from 0 to infinity of 0 minus 1 to the n over the square root of n plus 1. If I simplify this, I get the sum from 0 to infinity of minus 1 to the n over the square root of n plus 1. Does this converge or diverge? Well, right away I can tell that this is an alternating series. And the positive parts of the terms, 1 over the square root of n plus 1, well, this is decreasing and it tends to 0. So by my alternating series test, this series will converge. Ah, cool. It means that I can include 0 as one of the endpoints of my interval. I will still have convergence at this endpoint. What about when x is equal to 2? When I plug in x equals 2, I get the sum from 0 to infinity of 2 minus 1 to the n divided by the square root of n plus 1. That simplifies to the sum from 0 to infinity of 1 over the square root of n plus 1. Okay, this looks a lot like a p-series, right? A p-series where p is 1 half, so this will likely diverge. Uh, in fact, this is exactly a p-series. If you write out the terms, you'll get 1 over the square root of 1, plus 1 over the square root of 2, plus 1 over the square root of 3, and so on. So we could write this as a p-series. We could write this as the sum from 1 to infinity of 1 over root n. Okay, we recognize this as a divergent p-series, right? So we actually can't include the other endpoint in our interval. 2 is not a point where the series will converge. Therefore, our interval of convergence, the interval of x values that lead to a convergent series, is the half-open, half-closed interval from 0 to 2. Let's wrap up this video with one more example. Consider the power series shown here, the sum from 0 to infinity of n x plus 2 to the n divided by 3 to the n plus 1. What are the radius of convergence and interval of convergence for this power series? Well, as usual, you would start with the ratio test. You would compute this limit and you should find that the answer is absolute value of x plus 2 divided by 3. The calculations are going to proceed in much the same way that they have in the past, so I'm going to leave this as an exercise to you. Okay, what does this limit tell us about the convergence of our power series? Well, by the ratio test, the power series is going to converge when the absolute value of x plus 2 over 3 is less than 1. We definitely have convergence there. If I move that 3 up, I find that the absolute value of x plus 2 should be less than 3. So I'm allowed to move at most 3 units away from the center of my power series, and I'll still maintain convergence. Possibly not at the endpoints, but we'll check that momentarily. For now, we can say that the radius of convergence is r equals 3. This is the distance that we're allowed to move from our center. Okay, now to find the interval of convergence, we'll rewrite this expression a little bit. We note that if the absolute value of x plus 2 is less than 3, that's the same thing as saying that x plus 2 is between minus 3 and 3. 
So by moving that two over, I find that x is between minus five and one. Now this may be our interval, but we may also have to include the endpoints. So let's check these. All right, let's write out the series that we get by plugging in minus five or one. When x is minus five, our series becomes the sum from zero to infinity of n times, let's see, this is gonna give me minus three to the n divided by three to the n plus one. I can cancel the three to the n on the top and bottom, and I'm left with the sum from zero to infinity of n times minus one to the n over three. We'll check the convergence of this in just a moment, but let's also write out the sum that we get by plugging in x equals one. We have the sum from n equals zero to infinity of n times three to the n over three to the n plus one. Again, some cancellation. We have the sum from zero to infinity of n over three. Notice that in each case, I actually get a divergent series. The reason why is that the terms aren't tending to zero. So both series diverge by the test for divergence. What does that tell me about the interval of convergence of my power series? Well, we don't include either endpoint. So my interval of convergence is the open interval from minus five to one. Here's a very quick summary of the examples we've seen so far. In the first case, we had one extreme, a power series that converged at every x in the interval minus infinity to infinity. The radius of convergence would be infinity. In the second example, we had the other extreme, a power series that converged only at its center, x equals two. The radius of convergence is zero. We can't move any distance away from the center and guarantee convergence. In our third and fourth examples, the radius of convergence was positive but finite. In that case, we have to check the endpoints of our interval. The interval of convergence could be open, it could be closed, or it could be half open, half closed.